In this video, we'll use Google Cloud Managed Service for Prometheus, along with managed collection to pull metrics from applications deployed in GK cluster. In the following video, we'll use a self-deployed collector based on the Prometheus operator. First, we'll create a VPC and GK cluster using Terraform. To deploy managed collection to Kubernetes cluster, it's not enough to simply enable it in Terraform or the UI console. Nowadays, the best practice is to use workload identity to only grant necessary permissions to pods that actually need them. This means we need to bind GCP IAM system with Airbag and allow collectors to push metrics to manage Prometheus. Unfortunately, managed collection as well as self-deploy collectors do not support Prometheus remote write protocol at this time. Next, we're going to deploy node exporters on each node. The managed collection runs Prometheus-based collectors as daemon set and ensures scalability by only scraping targets on collocated nodes. To scrape node exporter, we'll use pod monitoring custom resource provided by managed collection operator. At this point, you can query metrics, create dashboards using Google Cloud UI, as well as set up alerts. In case you want to use Grafana, you would need to deploy another component that is called Prometheus UI and use it as a proxy. This workaround is necessary because Grafana does not support authentication using Auth2, but all Google Cloud APIs require it. At the end of the video, I'll share my personal opinion on whether you should use managed collection or self-deployed collector and integrate it with Prometheus operator. Let's go over the Terraform code. We have to include Google and Google Beta providers to be able to deploy managed collection using Terraform. In the future, most likely this functionality transitions to the stable Google provider. Next, we need to enable a few Google Cloud APIs to create a GKE cluster. This will not break anything even if you have already enabled those APIs from the console. Then the standard regional VPC. I also like to create all the routes myself. That's why I delete default route to the internet gateway. Next, we have a private subnet with secondary ranges for Kubernetes ports and services. Then the default route to the internet gateway. NAT gateway to provide internet access for compute instances without public IP addresses. Also, I highly recommend manually allocating external IP address for the NAT. Google Cloud Service Account for Kubernetes nodes. It is used to set up firewalls and provide IAM permissions for cloud services. GK cluster with private nodes and enabled workload identity. When you enable it, you need to create Google Cloud Service Accounts and bind them with Kubernetes service accounts. As I mentioned before, to automatically deploy managed collection using Terraform, you need to use Google Beta provider. And finally, Kubernetes nodes. I think two nodes are enough for this tutorial. Let's go ahead and apply Terraform. To connect to the cluster, go to UI and copy the cloud command for your cluster. To quickly verify setup, run kubectl get nodes. Now let's deploy node exporter. The first step is to create a monitoring namespace, service account, cluster role, and cluster role binding. To deploy node exporter, we use a daemon set. Finally, the managed collection operator provides two main custom resources. Pod monitoring if all your pods are deployed in the same namespace and cluster pod monitoring in case pods are spread between multiple namespaces for a given application. Most of the time you'll use pod monitoring resource. It's similar to the Prometheus service monitor custom resource. Specify the pods label and endpoint. The difference with the Prometheus service monitor is that you need to create an endpoints object and select endpoints using labels. In this case, you select pods instead of endpoints. A managed collection has its own namespace and a few pods. You have the operator and collectors that deployed on each node. Now let's apply node exporter and check if the pods monitoring object is created. Now here's the issue. When you deploy managed collection in the clusters with workload identity enabled, collectors would get permission denied errors to push metrics to manage Prometheus. You can find errors in the log. We have the error permissions denied. We need to give monitoring time series create policy to the collector's pod. 
First, we need to create a new collector service account in GCP. Then we need to allow the Kubernetes collector service account from the GMP system namespace to use Google collector service account. Finally, we need to grant necessary permissions to the account. In this case, it's a metric writer role. That's all what we need to do on the GCP side. Let's apply it again. You can find this service account in the console. If you click on it and navigate to the permissions tab, you'll find a binding with a Kubernetes service account. And under the IAM section, you can find that your account already have the necessary access to managed Prometheus. The last thing is to add annotation to the Kubernetes service account. You can automate this using Terraform, but I just want to show you explicitly what you need to do to make it work, specifying the account name, namespace, and annotation. You must replace the project ID with yours. Now, to verify, let's get the YAML. You can see that it now has the necessary annotation. I think if you wait long enough, pods eventually get access. But to speed up, you can either perform a rolling restart on the pods or simply delete them to restart. If you check the logs, those permission errors should disappear at this point. Now, you already can query your metrics using Google Cloud UI. There are a few ways how you can do it. First, to validate, you can go to Manage Prometheus under Monitoring tab and use App Metric. This metric indicates if the target is successful it's great. Since we have two nodes, we have two entries. One indicates that the target is up and available for Prometheus collectors. Now let's run something more interesting, such as this expression. Here we use node CPU seconds metric provided by node exporter to calculate CPU usage in percentage. Based on the Prometheus, the CPU usage is around 5%. You can verify that under Compute and observability tab if you wish. The next option is to use metrics explorer tab. Here we also have a special PromQL tab. Let's use the same query and run it. We got a similar result but now we can save the query as a chart. Let's call it CPU usage by instance. By now you have a fully functional monitoring setup. You can add additional targets such as your application to monitor by using pod monitoring custom resources and visualize your metrics in Google Cloud UI. Many of us would prefer to use Grafana and especially if you have already created a bunch of dashboards and don't want to recreate them in GCP UI. Grafana doesn't support Alpha 2 but all Google Cloud APIs require it. As a workaround we can deploy another component Prometheus UI slightly modified by Google and use it as a proxy. But first since we use workload identity we need to create a GCP service account and grant access. The workflow is similar to the deployed managed collection. In this case, we'll deploy Prometheus UI to the monitoring namespace. Also, we need to annotate the service account beforehand. You would need to replace the project ID with yours. The deployment object. Before using any of my code, use a global search to find to-do comments where I indicate that you need to replace something. I could have used variables, but in my opinion, when you try to learn something, it's easier that way. Let's apply the Terraform and apply the Prometheus UI. All right, in the monitoring namespace, we have the node exporter and Prometheus UI deployed as a front end. Since we don't have ingress, let's just use port forward to expose Prometheus. You can go to localhost 9090. If you don't have any errors in the UI, means you successfully configured workload identity. You can also try to query manage Prometheus from this UI. All right, it works. The last step is to deploy Grafana and add this Prometheus UI as a data source. Here we have a secret. You can use echo to encode any string to base64. Then Grafana configuration file. You can add Prometheus data source from the Grafana UI or from the code. Deployment and a service. Let's also apply Grafana and use port forward to expose it. The username is admin and the password is devops123. You can validate the data source by going to the data source section and clicking test. 
Now let's import node exporter open source dashboard. From now, you can deploy additional monitoring components such as CA Advisor and others and import dashboards. If you have never used Prometheus, managed collection may be an easy way to get started. But if you already have deployed Prometheus using open source Prometheus operator, you can simply substitute Prometheus image in the Prometheus custom resource to make it work. Another reason why I would stay with self-deployed Prometheus is that you can monitor both applications running in Kubernetes as well as standalone instances by using Google Cloud API and labels to discover them dynamically. And of course, you can use custom resources provided by Prometheus operator. In the following video, I'll show you how to set up managed Prometheus with open source Prometheus operator.